Next podcast with Chris and Todd. Uh, every now and then, I want to come back on the next podcast and be like, it's breaking news. Hey, welcome back to the next podcast. We have breaking news for you. What's the breaking news? Uh, Hit us with it. It's it's today. It's podcast day. <laughs> That's not breaking news. I know I'm it's sorry. not breaking. I don't have breaking news other than there's actually snow in the air today here there in is. South Dakota. Uh, snow right. in the air. That sounds like it should be a song, but it, it's not. I know. Snow in the air. <laughs> It'd be like a rage song. It sucks. It sucks. <laughs> <Don't>, anyway. <laughs> I actually thought it would be like a frozen song. Oh. Snow in the air. But there you go. Do you want to go away now? <laughs> we can catch a flight somewhere. <laughs> this podcast let's, is going downhill let's, quick. Let's, let's restart. Here we go. Yes. All right. Hey, welcome back to the next podcast. Uh, I am Chris, and I am here with the one and only Todd. Todd. I was going to say it. I, I didn't know. There was a pause, so I thought you needed me to say it. Well, or just I don't know if you know this, Todd, but it's called dramatic effect. Oh, I apologize. And so, no, that's right. I was building suspense for the people on the other side of the uh, the listening audience. Always trying to pull them in. I like it. Um, yeah, listen. We care. We care. Mm-hmm. Hey, uh, we are excited to be back with you. Hopefully, you're checking out the podcast. Maybe, maybe you're sharing it. Maybe you want to take a moment right now and just go, hey, I have a couple friends. I'd love for them to listen to this podcast. That'd be awesome. On top of that, those of you who have come up to us and said, hey, thank you for doing this podcast. Thank you for sharing that. Sometimes we have no idea if anybody's listening to this. So it's we, fantastic. My mom is and uh, Sarah Long. So okay. shout out to our two favorite fans, yeah. uh, Sarah Long. I don't know if Tina does or not. I have no idea. I'm pretty sure Rachel does not. Mm. So she hears enough of Chris. So we're done. I would probably agree with yeah. that. I think. <laughs> you hear enough of Chris too? I'm, like, mm. uh, I'm not listening to that podcast. No. No. No, uh, welcome back, and and we want to dive in uh, on something that Todd and I uh, literally are both passionate about. Uh, we we really are excited about um, other people getting in God's word, and and so often uh, when someone thinks about the Bible or looks at a Bible, sometimes there's an intimidation factor. Sometimes there's insecurity that creeps in. Sometimes there's just a fear of I don't even know what to do with that. I don't I don't know how to even process or engage it. And and for us, the best conversation is, listen, it's not as intimidating as it has to be. And there are some really great tips, tricks, but but really um, our hope is that you'll just have a willingness to, to say, okay, I want to engage it. I want to find out what this is about. Because if we're going to live and, and take those next steps in growing with God, we've got to we've got to know what His Word says, and we've got to be willing to engage His Word. And it's so vital for for us to to be a part of understanding and learning and growing um, and getting God's Word in our life. And uh, that's that's just yeah, such an exciting thing when we get to be a part of that. Yeah, and you look through church history, you see for the longest time. I mean. Pastors were the only ones who could read the Bible because yeah. it was in yeah. a certain language and nobody knew that language. And uh, and so the moment where the Bible became available to everybody, yeah. it was printed in a language that everybody could understand, uh, that became a game changer. I think we're in another phase now to where it's like you have the opportunity in front of you to actually study it, mm-hmm. know it. And, and so you... And I'd go, there's resources now online that... It used oh, to be wow. you have to buy like commentaries yep. and you have to have it all on paper. And so that just made it sometimes problematic, but not now. No. Like there's there's some great resources out there that are free and and the ability to study it. But sadly, I think the reason this is a passion of ours is because um the amount of people who don't read their Bible. Yeah, absolutely. Like or don't know the Bible. I mean, I've had plenty of moments where I'm like, Hey, do you know this story? And they go, I got I don't, I don't know who you're talking about. Yeah, and you're like, oh, okay. We're so we're starting there, which is fine. But I think I'd be like, man, I want you to know this for yourself. Yeah, like, absolutely. How powerful this story can be. But I also understand. I was there too. It's taken years of being able to understand. You read a story in the Bible. You read a certain passage, and you're like, what was that? Yeah, I absolutely. Don't, I don't get that. Um, and and one of the main questions everyone's like. So where do I start? Yeah. You know, and you're like, I already go, don't start in Genesis. Yeah. That's not <laughs> um you're gonna get into some some books pretty quickly there after Genesis, or you're gonna be like, What is happening? Yeah. Like, why is there so many rules? This is so uh, boring. And now you would go, you gotta understand the big picture of the Bible. That's not the climax of the story. The bigger part is the gospel. Start there and then yeah. everything else. And I know 
uh, we like to like, well, I want to read in chronological order. I want to understand the full. And I go, yes, but this is not like. It's not like a novel that you yeah, want. Yeah, or a like, yeah. movie you're trying yep. to understand. Because yep. um, a movie's only giving like sometimes the highlights of this. And I go, this is a big picture. And you want to start with the main part of it so that you can understand the rest of it. Yeah, and it really is exciting when when you can kind of, one, relieve the pressure of somebody that's like, listen, I started reading Genesis, and after he named the animals, I was out. and Or uh, I got to Leviticus, and are you serious? That's right. Why is that in the Bible? Or... Um, that's, or I'm really confused. I'm confused because that's messed up, right? You know, but start with Jesus and start with his life and start with his ministry and start with the way that he engaged people. You you will find that the Bible speaks uh, about Jesus all the way through, but understanding Jesus is is probably the most important aspect of understanding the Bible, and because it is his love letter to us, and this way in which we uh, can take that intimidation and barriers away and just say, hey, listen, let's start here. Let's dive in together. It, I don't know. Uh, even for me right now, um, I have a group of guys, uh, on, and we meet on Wednesday night, and it's just a, a blast to, to listen to them share about what God is, is teaching and showing them. Um, and some of them understand more than others, and, and that's fine, but you know, um, the idea of seeing God at work in our lives through God's word is such a powerful thing. And, and, uh, it, you're right. It's so accessible. I mean, David has talked about the alpha Bible. Um, there's the U version app. Uh, maybe there's a different, like you grew up in King James and you're like, I, I can't read that anymore. And you're like, I really want, uh, and the NLT works for you. The NIV, uh, just, I, you you said it without saying it. Start somewhere. Start. It's not too late to start somewhere, right? Begin and and ask questions and and uh, I'm I'm looking forward to unpacking this some more. So um, somebody comes to you and and says, "Hey, I want to begin reading God's Word, or I want to begin understanding some things better." Where where are you going to point them? Like even either in the Bible or just inside the life of our church. Uh, I would say first thing is start with the gospel. My recommendation would be Mark because he's got more of a approach that's like, hey, let me tell you the story of Jesus. Yeah. Um, and just more of, I want you to get to know this man. Yeah. yeah. And so uh, some of the others have just unique dynamics to it. Like Matthew's got more like, I want the Jewish person to understand. Yeah, so yeah. you got a lot of the, um, na- all these names that we read yeah. of the genealogy of Jesus. And you're like, I don't. Okay, I don't whoever that is. Yeah. yeah. Um and then Luke is is good too, but it's got a little bit more of a scientific. He was a doctor and he's like, I'm trying to explain this to another person. And so Luke is actually connected to Acts because he was trying to explain, here's Jesus, here's how the early church started. Yeah. So get that. And John's just uh I love his book, but it's a very unique like yeah. uh, just coming from a very a uh, close relationship yep. with Jesus. Yep. So you've got those dynamics. That's why I think Mark is a good place because you're going to quickly get into the stories and it's going to move and it's going to go. Yeah. Um, but I think reading through all of them over time, and to me, I go, read at the pace you want to read at. Mm-hmm. Uh, sometimes uh, a chapter a day is great, uh, or just 10 verses. Yeah. Like just making time mm-hmm. to kind of let it kind of soak in. But there's would be the other part. I go, think of this within two kinds of readings. Okay. One would be, this is for your um, letting the words speak to you just through just a simple reading. Yep, like yep, I think like yep. what you're doing on a daily basis or even like, let's say, even if it's three or four times a week, just going, I want to just take in the scriptures. I'm going to see what they, they kind of reveal to me, what God says to me, all those kind of things. Um, and so that way you can kind of begin to go, okay, it's, it's starting to kind of build on something. I think of that as more devotional reading. It's yep. kind of that first yep. read kind of deal. And you're just letting it speak to you. Uh, those things are good. That, that's great. But at some point, you'll probably need a second read. Yeah. And when I say second read, that's where you study it. That's where you let God speak into, here's why this passage matters. Yeah. And so that's where you have to do studying. That's where you have to let other people who have studied this speak into it. And here's what I would recommend. Let's say you read through Mark and you're reading through it. The questions that you have, like, wait, why Why did he say that? Or why did he do that? Or um, why is this happening? Yeah. 
some of those things, then you can go, now I want to read it a second time and go study it. Yeah. And that's where I would get into, like you've got things like blueletterbible.org that can help you. Now, I would recommend meeting with somebody who knows how to navigate it because yeah. it's a little, um, it's got a lot in there, a ton in there. It's got commentaries. It's got the ability to do word studies for sure. you sure. to where you could look at, where I give you an example, like John 21. Jesus says, do you love me three times? And Peter responds with, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. We see the same word, yeah. love, and all yeah. of that. But if you study it, he's actually saying a different word back to God. Mm -hmm. And so just knowing, like, you wouldn't know that unless you study it. But some things that I've learned is, like, when you're looking at a passage, wait, why is that word being mentioned so many yeah. times? Yeah, absolutely. Like, or the context of something, like, culturally, do I understand what's going on? Because in the first read, here, you're putting in so much of what you know and understand in your life. Yeah into that. That's not fine. I mean, sorry, that is fine. But at some point, you've got to let, wait, am I trying to tell the scriptures what I wanted to say yeah. to me? At some point, you have to have a second reading, like, what are the scriptures actually teaching me about God? Yeah, It's what almost is... like God, like, you kind of go, ooh, I needed that for today, where God goes, great, second read, here's what I need you to know yeah. out of this. Yeah, Does what's that make the, sense? Yeah, what's the context of it? What are the things that, what's right. deeper into it? And, like, reading, like, oh, cool, God provides. Like, say the story of the fish, you yep. know, the boy with the five, with the loaves and fish. Like, okay, yep. great, but that's... That's God doing a miraculous thing. The one thing, the story I think about too is just Jesus calming the water, you know, and in the disciples with the boat and he calms the waves in the sea. And they're like, who is this that even the waves in the sea, like God had already shown power over the spiritual realm, but now he was showing power over the, the natural realm. And just and you don't get that on the the first read. You're like, oh, cool, Jesus made the waves go away. No, hold yeah, on. First read, you yeah. go, God, man, I just hope you do a miracle like that in yeah. my life. Surprise Can you me get today. rid of the waves in my right. life? Yeah, like, so, totally get that. That's yeah. healthy. That's normal. Yeah. But that's you kind of like implying what you would love for yeah. that that scripture to say. Mm -hmm. But the second read becomes more of because um, sometimes that can happen. But the danger is only doing first read yep. is you actually could miss out on the weight of what scripture is because yeah. you keep putting your own thoughts and your your understanding on top of yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. The second read is where you let God speak to you, to where you get some of the mm -hmm. deeper stuff, yep. the deeper things that you're going, ooh, I didn't know that, or I didn't. And this is where Scripture starts to have this kind of, I'll call it the onion effect. It has layers yeah, to it. Yeah, yeah. To where you're like, man, I keep diving deeper, and it keeps getting better and better. Maybe onion's not a great example well, because no one likes the look more layers of an onion. And my mind goes to Shrek all the time, like, okay. right? Like, yeah, I, ogres have layers, yeah. <laughs> You know, maybe that's not a good analogy. Uh, maybe it's a parfait. I don't know anybody I, I, that like a parfait. Like we need to like like a seven layer cake or something like that. It yeah, maybe yeah. keeps getting better as you go through. Like the your layers. friends where they did the trifle. Yes. Anyway, yeah. So there you go. Yeah. That's that's more what I. You lost. No, I'm just kidding. No, I. And here Chris what, is now hungry. Oh, so. man, always. Anyway, um, hear me. Hear me in this. Um, the first read or whatever you want, just reading. There's there's nothing wrong with th no. that being. No. Don't don't get caught up in this mindset. Like okay. Um, I've got to have a second read and a third read. No, hold on. J if you're just beginning and and you have questions, write those questions down or come back to it later. Or But the goal is to just read and not read to read. Like, hey, I'm going to read this. Like, if you only get through 10 verses a day, that's awesome. Allow, allow God's word to speak to you. Allow God's word to get in you. And, and that is, and even if it's a verse, uh, because then you go to, like back to a Psalms where David says, meditate on the Lord's word and and allow it to just be a part. And maybe it is, you know, maybe there's just something like for God so loved the world in John 3, 16. Okay, God, you love the world. Help me love the world today. Um, and you just want to focus on that because you have a hard time loving those people around you that make you crazy. Or maybe you're <laughs> just real life. Maybe things in your house are, are a little bit more tense than you want them to be right now. Okay, God, if you love the world so much, help me love those people in my house better. And those those can be first read things, but then you say, okay, wh well, how God, how did God love the world? Well, he gave. Okay, well, then you have to ask a question in your to break it down in your house, like how am I giving towards the people in my house? Or how am I giving towards the people in my workplace? 
and allowing God's love to be evident as I not just take from those relationships, but give to those relationships. And I agree, like those those layers of of reading, because even for you and I, um, that we've read them multiple, multiple, multiple times. It's amazing how God continues to reveal himself, sometimes in new ways. Sometimes it's the seasons of our lives and the circumstances and situations. And and seriously, hear me when I say this. This is another part about reading God's word. The circumstances and situations of your life right now will affect the way in which you read God's word because you may read something and go, I don't like that at all. I, in fact, I hate that. I don't want to talk to this person or I don't want to treat them this way. I don't want to deal with suffering. Or forgiveness, Mm -hmm. you know? And so the stage and the season of life that we are in, and that's why, um, to me, one of the most important things that I learned um, in beginning to study the Bible is, okay, God, I just want to meet with you today, and I want you to speak what what you have in this, and and help me help me hear it, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, not not just come in with because it's easy to come into reading God's word with all the busyness and all the craziness of our, of our life, and and that's why this idea of marking out time or or creating a time or an environment that that we're ready to read it and and hear or listen. I would say, think of it like this, like think of your dynamic with the Bible of like, put it in, in the best that you can, put it in relationship context. Yeah. Um, I'd be like, if you were, if I had written out a story about myself, Yeah. okay, and you wanted to get to know Todd, but you couldn't see Todd, couldn't, couldn't have mm-hmm. meetings with Todd, but I'd written this whole book about me, but then you just only kind of Pinterest or Instagram it. Yeah. <laughs> As in you took like just little bits yeah. of my story and you're like, this is who Todd is. And that's why, you know, I know him. I'd kind of look at you and go, you missed some big portions there. Yeah. Like, yeah. you really don't know me. And actually that piece is connected to so many other things along the way. Yeah. And so that's the part that I see sometimes happening. And hey, we're all guilty of it. We'll take one scripture and be like, man, that's awesome. Yeah. Yep. And that that's that's what I need. And hear me. That's if you were just getting to know me, I'd love for you to start there. Yep. Like that's where I'd want you to start. But at some point I want you to go like, hey, have you read the whole thing though? Yeah. Have you read like when I went through this and went through that? Because that's why I said that. Um, and so that's the part where I would go, is your relationship with the Bible very surface level? Mm-hmm. And or is it starting to add depth to your life? Because it should change yeah. your life. Because that's what the scripture says. It does not come back void. Uh Um, It is like a sword that cuts through joint and marrow. It's it's got all those components to it. And I think for us, like we understand, it wasn't always that for us in our lives. No, it was just all right. It's that book I got to read at some point. And I think that's it. I think it's it's such an ominous feeling when people look or think about the Bible because they envision a Bible that sat in their house that had dust on it or this big book that sat at the front of the church or the one that the priest only read. That I'll never understand. That I'll never understand. And and then you say a phrase like the word, well, you said part of it, like the word of God is living and breathing and just yeah. sharper than any double-edged sword, right? Go. And and because it cuts through bone and, and separates bone and marrow. Yeah. And okay, okay. And, and just even the conflict in people's minds, right? What are you talking about? It's breathing. No, it's a book. It's an old book that doesn't have anything. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Right. You know, sure is God breathed. Yeah, himself. and and just when we are willing to, and that comes back to a willingness to engage. Um, listen, if if you don't start with a willingness to engage God's word and and to read it through, not just so you can debunk some things or you can just feel good about something and find those verses that will help you but be challenged by it, the things that you like and the things that you don't like. Because that's what relationship is, right? There are things that my wife loves about me, and there are things that she probably wishes I could change, like mm-hmm. yeah, last week. Right. <laughs> and that would be the same case as you read the Bible with yeah. God. There's parts of it still that I'm like, oh, God, I just don't understand that part. Like, yep, yep. I don't get why you chose to do that. And even when I study it, it's sometimes you're like, but some of that is I want it to be like, you gotta be careful with this when you read the Bible. It's like I don't get to determine who God is yeah. when I read oh, this. Man. Like it is more me learning who he is, yeah. and he gets to determine that, not me. Yeah. And so that's the part I go, 
that's I go back to the analogy of like if you only read little bits of it, you're totally determining yeah who that person is yeah. or who God is without knowing the full weight of it. He goes, No, 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 I I wrote this whole whole dynamic and yeah. you gotta understand all of it. However, I want you to start here and let's keep building on this. Yeah. And it's a journey. Like none of us I think will ever get to a spot to where we're like, man, I fully understand the Bible. Oh, yeah, absolutely. No, but I would say, hopefully, five years later, you have a lot better understanding of the yeah. Bible than what you did. Um, and I look at that in marriage. I look at that, I, I would say, any relationship. When we start getting lazy in that area mm-hmm. of pursuing our spouse yep. or pursuing our kids, and we're just like, oh, I know them, Yeah. Well, then we run the risk of it. Uh, the relationship kind of starting to die on some yeah. levels it's not as no. healthy as it should be i mean we can always point out like things are either growing or dying yeah and so i know that's extreme but it, on some levels we know it to be true if i stopped dating tina and dating my wife i'd be like here we go like there you go that's the yeah. problem <laughs> yeah and so um and so that's that's and, and my kids if i just started like hey guys i'm too busy for you i don't have time to do any yeah. of this stuff yeah well, then there you go. You're making the decision there. On that. I would be worried if you did that. I think you'd die in your sleep. I'm just going to be honest. <laughs> I, I know your kids, and as much as they love you, they may smother you in your sleep some night. Like, yeah. Dad doesn't love it. No, I'm just kidding. Anyway, um, no, I think I think you're right. And it made me think about, like, just a relationship that I have with, like, my oldest daughter. And, and you know, you talk about that growth. And, and it changes, right? Like, and it has to change. And it can't, you know, there's a passage of scripture. Like when I was a child, I, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. But when when I grew up, I put away those childish things. And and that that should really be an understanding of God's word. Like it can't just be, you know, it's not that it's bad. Yes, Jesus loves me because the Bible tells me so. And But okay, uh, what are the depths of his understanding what does he desire for me in the way that I treat other people? What does he hope that I will believe about myself? How do I pray for others? How do I engage other things that we'll talk about in the weeks to come, like the Holy Spirit? And 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 what does he want for me when it comes to telling other people about what I'm reading? And just all of those ways that that it grows us and challenges us not to just be the same person we were when we first picked it up. And um, whether that leads you to find a devotional that will um, encourage you in this area, whether you read it and go, okay, I have a question about that, then then let's set up a time to meet. Please don't don't just read God's word and say, I don't understand it. I'm going to put it back on the shelf. Okay, okay, I don't understand this. And and let's let's talk. Let's grab some coffee. Let's let's get together because there there is such a desire and a heartbeat for for Todd and I. Please understand this for you. To, to want to grow and to understand what you're reading and, yep. and see God's God alive in, in his word and for you in your life. I think with this, like, yes, some of this is you doing it on your own, but you also need to take it to a community yeah, yeah. of faith to uh-huh. where as you learn things, because if you're not careful, Satan can isolate you yep. and manipulate what the scriptures are saying. Yeah. He tried to do it with Jesus. Yeah. Don't think he's not going to do it with you. And so in that, that means you have to have like, okay, I'm watching this on YouTube. This person says this, oh, this is what all the scriptures yeah, mean. Yeah. Okay, that's one aspect of yes. the community of faith, but you better have some other people that you get to bounce it out yep. off of to where you're not in your own <clears throat> echo chamber and some yeah. of that. Mm-hmm. Um, I think having a pastor, having a counselor, having a support group, like what your guys are doing within yeah. the men's group, that's a that's a great support group. But I also would say we have a, a resource called Right Now Media. Yep. You could go like, I want to read more about the book of Mark. Mm-hmm. I guarantee you there is some pastor who's done a whole bunch of studying on Mark that you could watch videos about. Boom, there's another person yep. of that community of faith that you are listening to that's going, okay, they've read it, they've pulled this inside. Yeah. Ooh, okay. Not saying you may, you may not agree with everything that yep. they say, but you've got to work through that. And so in some of that, here's the great part, you've got to find the right kind of people in that yeah. community of faith Yeah, to who, who are believers and who want to know Jesus and have a deep relationship with Jesus, because sometimes they can be deceiving you. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, uh, man, I just, I appreciate that. I think it is so true to, to, you know, the, I, all I can think about is that song, take a deep dive, you know, into your heart and, and taking this deep dive into different ways in which, 
we can see God speaking to us and God challenging us and growing us. And so, um, yeah, whether it's a group, maybe maybe you need to take that next step towards a group. Maybe you need to take that next step to telling somebody that, hey, what would it look like for you and I to get together to read God's word? Um, maybe we can meet once a month and talk about what we're reading. Maybe you have a couple friends. Maybe, and, and that's the that's a weird part. Like this is kind of like a side caveat, right? Like if you and I were friends and and just we love watching baseball together, we love playing sports, and and then I look at you one day and say, hey, what would it look like if we just grabbed coffee and talked about God's word? <laughs> and you're like, you know, um, you have to know your friendships, you have to know the reality, but that really is a great next step of saying. Because let's be honest, all those things are great. Love talking basketball, love talking about kids. But man, God is calling us as followers of Jesus to take a step to to be intentional with the things of Jesus and the things of his word. And so um, I would encourage you, what would that look like to begin having more conversations about, about God, his word, and and how it applies to the lives that we live today and, and how important that is? Some people ask us, like, man, how did you get that from those scriptures? And some of it, yeah, studying, but I'd also like, I want you to experience the scriptures coming alive for yep, yourself. Yep, yep. Like, I want you to have those moments to where, just like when I'm putting a sermon together, yeah, I'm studying this, but sometimes it's just nice not to even have a sermon and see God speak yeah. through his word of like, yep. hey, did you see this? So this is how I put this together. And sometimes that comes from reading a book. Sometimes that's hearing a sermon. Like I have this community of faith that I'm just leaning on to be like, ooh, that's good. Oh, I never thought of yep. it that way. Yep. And scriptures start to come alive more and more. And so that's a part, but you've got to put in the work to kind of experience yeah. that to yep. where you are just reading it just to soak it in and get to know God more, but also then letting God speak to the depths of it within yeah. your second read. Yep, and I would agree. And and one of the things that excited me when you said that was, I mean, just last night at group, one of the guys, I think it was John 15, just talking about the vine and the branches, you know, and talking about Jesus, uh, how, he, how he prunes those branches that are ineffective so that there can be new growth. And, and just the great conversation that came out of that reading of scripture, like, and and guys going, oh, I don't like being pruned. And other guys going, oh man, I maybe I need to show more fruit. And it's just it's fun when God's word is spoken. And and I was super proud of the guy that that read that scripture and shared it. And just it's fun. It's fun to to hear God's word and see it come alive to more and more people. And so um, that's that's the whole point of this. It's podcast. life changing. It it's life giving. It gives you some answers to some major questions that you're having. So. Yeah, absolutely. Let's let's go. And and seriously, um, as always, Pastor Todd and I are available and willing and just excited when you come to us and say, hey, let's let's chat about this for a second um, and what that means, because we want you to take that next step in your faith. So, well, and you see it. He's got a group that you can just go read the Bible yep. together and learn in a group of this. I do a whole thing on how to study the yep. Bible. Like, hey, here's these things. Here's these tools. Yep. So you've got two different approaches to that that I think both are needed. Yeah. Thursday so, mornings, there's another great group yeah. that's doing the same thing. So. so I go, take in that. But even if you're like, well, I'm not around Rapid City, maybe you're listening to this or wherever, or it just can't work, well, you can start this on your own. Let it kind of start building that. But you've also got to find, eventually, that community of faith to bounce it off of. Absolutely. Hey, we'll see you next time. Have a great day. Until then.